Hello there everyone, welcome back to James Redman TV and welcome to another Redman Roundup where we're going to be discussing a little debate that is, well it's not really a little debate, I feel like it's becoming a more growing debate in the Liverpool fan base, but definitely being one for time between Liverpool fans and neutrals. So I feel, let me just set out the debate for you, I feel that we've got people on both sides of the spectrum. So you've got certain groups of Liverpool fans saying, Trent's the best right-back of all time, he's the best right-back in the world right now, and there's no one that can compete with Trent. And then you've got neutral fans who says, well, how can you rate one player so highly when he has that many defensive errors? Or it gets talked about more when it comes to Trent and what it does for Kyle Walker or Rhys James or whatever. And that's because maybe from time to time it's more occurring, but you've got to break down why does Trent get caught out more than the other right-backs? And it can just be down to the fact he's not as good at defending as them. But where I think there's an agenda, and that's the title of this video, is based on when I see managers, like I can't remember the fella's name, however, there was a manager who manages in the Championship or League One, and he was saying Trent's defensive level is of a championship calibre, which, let's be honest, that is just absolutely ridiculous. And the reason why that's ridiculous, and in my opinion, just shows a clear lack of education of not watching Liverpool week in, week out, is because that is just so far from the truth. I Trent would not be able to get away playing at the Premier League week in, week out and getting beat man for man. Oh, but he plays with Virgil van Dijk. Virgil van Dijk doesn't cover a whole back line. Like, it's such a stupid argument when people bring up, oh, but he plays with Van Dijk. First of all, Van Dijk is on the left-hand side of the fence. Him and Robertson covered the left-hand side. Matip, Gomez or Kanate cover the right-hand side with Trent. Trent is definitely more susceptible when it comes to the defensive part of the game than our left-back and our left-centre-back. But Van Dijk can't be everywhere at once. So those seasons where we won the league and the charges for the Champions League and the seasons where we got 97 points last year where we played every possible game, Trent played the majority of those games and we played every possible game last season. Do you really believe if he was a championship-level calibre defender, he would not be in this Liverpool football side? I think that's really stupid to, to suggest. You know, you see Premier League level strikers who would be more arguable. So you see finishers in the Premier League strikers who they can get 10 Premier League goals. And it's good because they're getting 10 Premier League goals. But in the Championship, they get 30 Premier League goals. So are they a world-class Championship striker? You've just got to break down to the specifics. OK, so if he's a Championship level um, defender, how come he's on a side of the pitch where he gets targeted the most? And wingers like Zaha and stuff like that are constantly scoring two, three goals a game. Because if he couldn't defend, he'd be constantly getting beat. And therefore, more people would be getting goals. So, I'm only saying there's an agenda because of how bad people make Trent sound. It's not the fact that you think he's a bad defender. To give my perspective, let me know if you disagree. I think Trent is a sound defender. Not world class, not terrible. I think he's sound. I think in the one-on-one -on -one aspect, he can improve. But I think his positioning is what lets him down most. However, he gets stuck in. He wins the ball. I'd probably say half the time, at least. And then there's the few occasions where he might get beat for the man. But defending isn't just about one-on-one -on -one no more, people. Back in the day where you're thinking about the Ashley Coles and the Gary Nevilles. The reason why it was easier to stand out defensively back then is because the team was not more or heavily as relied on when it came to the system. So these were players who their first job and their main priority was to defend. It's why you wouldn't see them getting goals and assists and it's why you wouldn't see them excelling when going forward. The way Trent is playing is the way David Beckham was playing. Right midfield, uh, wing back, whatever you want to call it. I, I feel wing back is just very modernised for a right midfielder. Then you've got Salah who's the right inside winger and that's the way that we structure the team in those aspects. Trent is very, very good at what he does when it, when it comes to going forward. It means we do not have to rely on him as much defensively if we want him to go forward so much. But we do have to rely on the midfielders covering for Trent because it's their job to make sure they're covering the defensive aspect. And that's recently what's been our biggest problem. It's the attack to get on the end of chances that Trent is creating from the back. So if you're going to create 10 chances a game, which Trent does because the manager tells him, it's very difficult to then have a go at him for the strikers not putting the chances to wait to put you 2-0, 3-0 in the lead. And then the opposition goes and gets a counter-attack and scores. Like, what the, the point I'm trying to make there is, 
If Trent's chances that he creates based on the way the manager tells him to play results in two to three goals, which besides this season has been a very reoccurring theme, then boom, you've already killed games of football. And Trent is definitely the best right back in the world because he's labelled as a right back. And that's why. And he has the biggest impact on the team. And that's why you've got to let him play week in, week out. And it's also why you don't see him getting caught out as much defensively. But maybe if the manager sat there with Trent and said, right, the first part of your game you need to improve is defensively. That's the main thing, which it's an it's also an area that he needs to improve. But it's not the main part. You'd rather, in our system, have Trent spamming in crosses and creating beautiful switches across the field than making sure he's just constantly trying to defend. Because then you don't get the creativity, you don't get the same volume of goals, and then you don't get an as dominant Liverpool team. Because the most effective way to win football matches is through the attack. Trent is one of the best attackers in the league. It's why we talk about how he's modernised and revolutionised that right-back position. Because yet he isn't world-class defensively. But that's not his first job. If his job was to be world-class defensively, maybe he'd see better defensive performances because he's in more defensive positions. He's not always in positions where he's looking to counter-attack and try and find that Salet Luis Diaz running in behind where he can ping that ball in. But he has to make a little sprint first himself and bring the ball forward. Trent is a ball carrier. Henderson is the one who should be there to drop deep. And this is where you've kind of got to look at Jürgen Klopp and say, well, he's actually setting up Trent to fail in the short term because... He's telling him to keep doing what he's doing, which is only going to get him caught out even more. But in the long term, when we do have that right-hand midfielder who can cover Trent, boom, Trent's just doing what he's always been doing. So, to break it down into a brief aspect, because I can hear people shouting at me over the screen, like, James, you've said nothing about him being a good defender. If anything, I've seen plenty of great examples of Trent being a more than solid enough defender for our style of play. He's not world-class defending. He's the worst defender out of our back four. But he wouldn't be in the team if he was a bad defender and he was conceding as many chances and, and conceding as many goals as everyone suggests. And now what you're seeing, and the reason why I think there's an agenda, is, for instance, the Trossard goal where Trent got sat down and it was humiliating and it creates funny memes. And listen, memes should definitely be a thing in football. It should be a thing for YouTubers. It just makes the internet... A more scary, but a much more better place because it gives us loads of joy and laughter. But that goal was massively down to the midfield, yet Trent is the one who gets called out for it because he got sat down on his ass, And then, because he got sat down on his ass, it brings back to the whole narrative of, oh, he's a shit defender, championship-level calibre, not good enough for Liverpool, overrated by Liverpool fans. When really, he's actually rated rightly by Liverpool fans. The kid's 24 and won every trophy possible. Ashley Young never done that at that age. Gary Neville never done that at that age. Think about the greatest fullbacks in the Premier League history and you will struggle to find any of them have a resume that Trent Alexander-Arnold does. And you will also try and struggle to find the importance of a left-back or a right-back to one team that Trent, in terms of the importance that Trent has towards this Liverpool team. So, as a footballer, he's world-class. And... You see that being shunned because he does get caught out a little bit more defensively this season. But just because he's been caught out more this season doesn't mean he didn't have a great season defensively last year. And if he didn't, he wouldn't have played. He wouldn't have helped us win the league title in the COVID season where we won the league in the quickest amount of time before COVID even came round. So it was actually a constellation. You could have cancelled the whole league and we still should have got the trophy because we dominated it that much. We conceded such few goals that season because of Trent Alexander-Arnold, but because he was caught out of position against Vinicius in the Champions League final, ah, he's shit, ah, he, he doesn't do nothing. But he had a good defensive performance against Cristiano Ronaldo in Kiev when we lost 3-1. I thought he was our best defender that day, funnily enough. I thought he was our best defender in the League Cup uh, final against Chelsea last year. Goal line clearances, great one-on-one -on -one defending, but that won't get talked about. So therefore, if that's not going to get talked about, the second he does make a mistake, Oh, we are, Trent's done bad again. Even though it's six weeks later and we haven't heard anything bad about him the past couple of weeks, probably because he's played well, he's now made a mistake again. Therefore, he's a championship-level calibre defender. Now, there's also alternative reasons to why I could suggest Trent gets slander. It could be because he's scouse. Oh, James, you're a victim. Listen, people don't like scousers. It can be a thing. You can prejudge someone based on the culture of where they're from. I'm not saying it's right to do that, but it's a very common theme of what a lot of people do. That could be one thing. It could also be to do with the colour of his skin. 
But the main reason why I think there's an agenda against Trent is because people are just lack ed- they lack the education side when it comes to football. And they'll read tweets and they'll see one photo of Trent getting caught out and then boom, championship level calibre defender. The main reason why I think he gets this shit is because he plays for a very hated team in the country and they just are fuming because he doesn't play in their team. He wouldn't suit most systems as much as he suits ours, but he still brings immense creativity to whatever team he plays for. And if you bring, He's one of the only right-backs that you talk about right now where he could play centre-mid, he could play right midfield, he could play in multiple various positions. Whereas when you look at other full-backs, Robertson... Reese James, all these players, you probably don't look at them in the same vein. And you'd even look at Kyle Walker and stuff like that. The reason why Kyle Walker has to make so many last-ditch tackles off the line clearances and, you know, last-minute tackles is because he creates defensive errors to where he has to run back on goal and catch up with the defender. So that's one aspect to his game that is poor. And it doesn't get talked about, but it does with Trent. So I do not know what the main factor is. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Let me know if you think I'm just chatting absolute nonsense. I'd love to get someone who's passionate about this topic on the channel. If you know anyone out there who doesn't believe Trent is a good defender, I would love to get them on the channel and discuss that with them, mate, because I'm here to have those discussions. It doesn't mean I'm right and it doesn't mean you're right. It just means there could be a common ground to where maybe some people are overrating Trent, some people are hating on him too much, and we just need to find that common ground with a rational and thought-out answer. But let me know what you think in the comments down below. Am I just getting too emotional because people are having a go at my scouser? But anyway, people, that's been today's Redmond Roundup. If you did enjoy, one way to really support the videos is to smash a like and to comment. It gets the videos more out there. It gives me more uh, courage to keep posting. And actually, I don't need much more because this is now my full-time job. So any assistance on you guys getting the videos out there by sharing and stuff like that, that would be absolutely marvellous. And I love every single one of you for it. Big up the Redmond's Army. Leave a comment and I'll reply to the first like hour worth of comments and i'll get back to all of them i'll try and reply to a lot more later on as well there should be another video out later the europa league matches are later as well and hopefully manchester united get battered because it's funny seeing premier league teams losing the europa league anyway that's been this video and i'll see you all in a bizzle peace